Hello everyone, Metallian Magic here, and today I am going to be unboxing a product, but before I get to that, I just want to point out uh, our lovely background today. This is the first time that this playmat has been featured on the channel. This is the uh, Grand Prix Anaheim May 2012 event playmat. Uh, I saw this first in the summer of 2014, and uh, at the time I had met a young lass named uh, Megan. Hi. She's right here. Um, and I thought that the uh, the heroine featured in this art uh, sort of uh, looks a bit like Megan. I, I still think that, and um, so uh, I got this playmat uh, for Megan, and uh, she has been so kind as to let us use it for this Fate Reforged Fat Pack unboxing. Um, so let's get to it. I don't want to uh, belabor this too much, you guys have hopefully watched some of my other Fat Pack unboxings, and if not, we have Born of the Gods, Journey into Nyx, M15, Cons of Tarkir, uh, Fat Pack unboxings already in the backlog. So Fate Reforged is the second set in Cons block. Uh, one of my favorite things about these, and I'm, I'm gonna put the, uh, Sleeve off to the side. This, as you guys might know, the inside of the sleeve has a cool poster. I'm not gonna unfold it right now. The poster is, is very similar to the art on the outside, but uh, has a slightly more sinister look to it. Um, is that a particular character on the packaging, Jason? Oh, actually, I'm sorry for what I just said, guys. The art on the inside the poster, I won't unfold it for you now because it, it actually is just this. It looks kind of darker and more sinister with the lighting, but. When I, when I looked at it more closely, it's it's basically just this in large form. Uh, this is Sarkin Vol. Uh, he is the main character of this, uh, well, at least Khans and Fate Reforged. Uh, we don't really know for sure if he's going to be the main character in Dragons of Tarkir. And uh, the Shadow of Ugin, the Spirit Dragon, is in the background. Ugin, the Spirit Dragon, in shiny foil form would be wonderful to open in this fat pack. So, as I was starting to say, one of my favorite things about Fat Packs, for those of you who have never seen one before, never purchased one before, is that they come with this really cool uh, booklet that has, you know, uh, holes punched so you can put it into a binder. And these, uh, I actually have not looked at the Fate Reforged booklet yet, so this is my first time opening one up. So this, this uh, is new to me as well, although I'm familiar with the layout. They usually have information about the set. Uh, they have information about the mechanics or the story, and then if you, I won't go through every single page, but information about uh, some of the main characters and sort of the, the overview of what's going on flavor-wise in the set. <clears throat> also, these feature, you know, pieces of artwork uh, from from the block in this case, because this piece of artwork where my thumb is is uh, the artwork featured on Sarkin the Dragon Speaker from Cons of Tarkir. Usually they profile the Planeswalker or Planeswalkers in the set. This set only has one Planeswalker, Ugin, the Spirit Dragon. This is the art that was featured on his alternate promo from the Ugin's Fate packs at the pre-releases. Pretty sweet. I saw one opened. I did not open one myself. Uh, and, oh, okay, this is cool. Talks about the, uh, gives you information about the, the different houses and what they were like. In the past, Fate Reforged takes place uh, over 1,200 years prior to the events of Khans of Tarkir. You can see that there is a, a different con back then, obviously, and uh, there are some dragon legends that are associated with each clan, or more specifically, a dragon legend that's kind of the uh, the nemesis, uh, or, or a dragon legend that leads a brood, a particular brood of dragons that uh, kind of, uh, is, these dragons are at odds with the various clans, so like Ojutai's brood is at odds with the Jeskai, at this time led by Shu Yun, the Silent Tempest. Etc. Etc. These are all cards in the set too. Salimgar, Tassigur, These are all uh, characters featured on actual cards in the set. So it has that. I won't go through every single one. I will stop on the, the Teamer one because I know Megan here really likes Teamer. Ferociousness. So Yasova Dragon Claw is uh, the, the great, 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 great times. However many greats grandmother of uh, <laughs> Sar uh, of Surak Dragon Claw. Look at her. How could you not love Teamer? She's got a giant kitty. Exactly. 
I think there was mention made of her giant cat in the booster box opening video that you hopefully have watched. Uh, so, also, they usually do this, they usually have a 10 coolest blankety blank cards. Blankety blank is replaced by whatever set, you know, the, the fat pack is of, so. These, these are often powerful cards, but these are also often powerful cards interspersed with cards that, in this case, uh, Ken Nagel, the lead designer of the set, really likes. So, like, I wouldn't necessarily say that Hero's Blade is one of the most powerful cards in the set, but it is a cool design, and uh, he clearly likes it. Some of these are very powerful cards, though. Uh, obviously, many of these cards will see play in at least standard, if not um, other formats. I think, you know, in the case of, uh, uh, of Ugin and Monastery Mentor, you may see them popping up in modern, so... And then uh, the Card Encyclopedia, which has every card by color and uh, alphabetized, so you can look at the entire set on these pages, a good way to learn uh, what the cards are for limited, and uh, at the back you have a checklist, and that way you can just check off uh, if you have the regular and or foil copy of every card in the set. So I take a little bit of time in these videos to highlight these, uh, these booklets because even though I wouldn't spend the full amount of money uh, on a fat pack just for that booklet, I certainly like getting a fat pack uh, when a new set comes out because uh, I kind of like the flavor and the lore and you know I, I'm a big fan of storytelling and so although I love playing the game I love magic just the same for the story that it tells and the characters it creates um, and I also love cracking packs so in a fat pack you will receive uh, a block of basic land cards oh okay so these are actually uh, the uh, Fate Reforged basic land cards that uh, were in the Ugin's promo pack. Um, the reason I say this is that, as you'll see uh, in this video, the regular booster packs have uh, either a, a, a common uh, gain land, as they're called, or a fetch land in what would be normally the basic land slot. So you get nine packs, uh, you also get spin down, they're randomized, so this one is uh, the purple Sultai spin down, but uh, you could receive any one of, of the five possible spin down counters available in the different clan colors uh, in one of these fat packs. So I am filming on a different camera than usual, and I don't know how much uh, space this thing has, so I'm going to try to be a bit time conscious on this video today. I do want to show you guys, though, before we get to the packs very quickly, you have these deck boxes that you can fold together and you, know, you just kind of fold the tabs in, etc, etc. Uh, but they are very cool because even though they can't hold sleeve cards, so I usually just put lands in them and bring those lands in my backpack to, uh, to draft in sealed events. They have uh, cool artwork usually from the set, I think always from, from the set. And uh, this one's Ugin the Spirit Dragon, and this one has the uh, sort of poster art for the set of uh, Sarkin Ablaze. So. Without further ado, let's open these booster packs. So Jason, if there was one card that you wanted to get in this fat pack, what would it be? And you could only choose one. Uh, because I just saw one in a case at a store today and I did not buy or trade for it at $57, Foil Monastery Mentor. <laughs> if we're just, if we're talking just uh, non-foils though, I still think Monastery Mentor it's a card that I would like to play in standard. Uh, I only have one of them so far, so I would like to uh, <clears throat> continue to either play Jeskai or perhaps play Mardu or, or Teamer. I wouldn't be playing Monastery Mentor, uh, Mentor in Teamer, but uh, I think that uh, in a red-white X deck, Monastery Mentor is going to be a good player in standard. So let me just get this focus. We have Whisk Away, Sibsig Host. Sultai Skullkeeper, Sandblast, there we go, that's more in focus. Just Guy Sage, Teamer Runemark, Right Into Being, Bathe in Dragonfire, that art looks really cool. Map the Wastes, our first uncommon is Channel Harm, followed by Huge Stone Retainers, and Obzon Kinguard. And our first rare or mythic. Oh, and there's a foil in here. I just revealed that. 
Just Guy Infiltrator. Like I said, we, uh, we're gonna kind of go through this without spending a ton of time on any individual card, but I will say, I've played against this card, uh, in Limited, and it is quite powerful. And the foil. The foil Sultai Skullkeeper. Looks quite neat. There you guys go. And did we get a fetch land? Nope. Thornwood Falls. And a manifest reminder card. Okay. Now that uh, Fate Reforged has been out for a period of time, uh, I would love to hear some comments on the set, so if any of you watching this video have thoughts on the set, please uh, leave those thoughts in the comments below. Okay. Will of the Naga, Obzon Sky Captain, Enhanced Awareness, Typhoid Rats, Grim Contest, Dragon Bell Monk, Gore Swine, Whisperer of the Wilds, Mardu Runemark, Ambush uh, Krotik. Would, that, would you pronounce that as Krotik? Uh, maybe Krotik. Krotik? Yeah, I'm not quite sure what the correct way to pronounce this card in it is, and seeing as it's not great and limited, I don't think this will come up on coverage too often. <laughs> uh, Carsey High Priest is our first uncommon, followed by Sudden Reclamation, and Winds of Call Sisma. And uh, I said this in the, uh, in the Booster Box video, but uh, sup, plant form. Sub plant form. I didn't make I didn't make that joke I up. Get that. Yeah, unfortunately I didn't come up with that, but to give credit to Luis Scott Vargas. Um so this is actually supplant form, or as someone said on a different podcast, supplant form. <laughs> so <laughs> that one they didn't mean to mispronounce though. Uh and that's uh this is a cool card. Uh bounces a creature and you get a token of it. And a scoured barons. It is interesting to note if you haven't noticed this or didn't know that the um, the basic land or not I'm sorry not basic land the, the common lands uh, in these packs the gain lands have different artwork than their cons of Tarkir brethren but uh, depict the same place on Tarkir in the past in this you know over a thousand two hundred year period that is being shown in this set and I think that's kind of a cool flavor element. So our third pack has Obzon Sky Captain, Jeskai Runemark, Dowson Gloom, Dowson Focus, Dwarf Flare, Erishin Cleric, Whisk Away, Mardu Runemark, another Ambush Krrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
rare. Mastery of the Unseen. Uh, so, funny, funny story about this card. Uh, for my second pre-release that I played in, I was, uh, I guess you could say the victim, but it ended up being kind of a, a blessing in disguise. I, I uh, was the victim of a packing error. I received a Jeskai seated box with a seated pack containing this as my promo card and then all Sultai cards, which was kind of weird. They didn't have any other Jeskai boxes left in the store, so I couldn't exchange it out. And then the rest of my packs had just insanely good uh, Sultai colored creatures, so I actually built a very solid Sultai value deck. Uh, but uh, that was definitely not what I expected when I opened my Jeskai box, uh, and it was weird that this was the promo card because obviously white is not blue, black, or green. Uh, do we have a foil here? Nope, we have a Blossoming Sands. And a Manifest. Reminder. Card. So in your opinion, this set in the block, do you think that it has changed which clan is the strongest in any of the formats you play, either limited or standard? Uh, I think this set actually did a really good job in standard of adding tools to various different decks. I think this set adds uh, tools uh, like Crux of Fate to blue-black control, it adds uh, uh, green, uh, like Frontier Siege to mono green devotion, it adds uh, Valorous Stance to Jeskai and blue-white blue heroic, Monastery Mentor to those decks as well, maybe Mardu, and uh, I think this did a good job of really actually spreading the wealth. Uh, in terms of limited, uh, I think that uh, blue and white have the best common, or sorry, white and blue in that order. White 1, blue 2 have the best commons and uncommons, so I think Jeskai got a lot better in draft with this set, uh, and especially because you're drafting a pack of Fate Reforged first, uh, and I think Mardu got marginally better. Uh, I do think there are a lot of good green creatures in this set, and I liked in triple cons, just to like draft green creatures and then kind of branch out and splash from their draft plan. So I think you could start with a Teamer Sabretooth, or, uh, you know, that's one of the best options, but even an, an Obzon Beastmaster or some other green creature and, and go from there and draft. Uh, our next pack has a... Speaking of one of the cards in blue that uh, pushes, pushes Jeskai up a rung in limited, Lotus Path Jin. Sultai Emissary, I like this card in Limited as well. Uh, Her Sustenance, I like this card in Limited as well. Abaddon Sky Captain, I like this card in Limited as well. This pack has some good options. Eh, this is probably the best rune mark. I don't love the rune marks, but this is probably the best one for Limited. So this pack is... is yeah, this, this is okay, but this pack is still pretty good already at, in terms of uh, depth for Limited. This, this card, this is one of those solid guys. I wouldn't first pick him, but this is one of those like solid green guys that'll probably do more work in this Limited format than you would think. Uh, Ugin's Construct, so nice. This pack, like I said, Wild Slash, nice. Sage's Reverie. This is this is a very deep pack already for limited in terms of uh, you know first first pick potential. Mm, I love the art, but I definitely uh, wouldn't pick this over some of the other cards in the pack. Uh, the setup cost I think is too high in limited. So, but I do love that uh, this particular artist, Lake Hurwitz, uh, has never uh, been featured on a magic card before. This is the first card that uh, has art by this artist, and I, by this artist, and I really like the art, so I hope that uh, this artist does more work for magic. And a Swift Water Cliffs. So if you did have to first pick a card in this particular pack, what would you choose? Um, just to kind of show you the options again, I... I think maybe Wild Slash or, or Lotus Path Jin, but I think you can pick up Jin's. Like, it's a good card. Um, I actually do, like I said, really like Blue in this format. I like the Sky Captain as well. Uh, so those are both, you know, either, those are both flying creatures that I would be happy to pick early. Uh, but uh, there will still be Morphs and Manifest, you know, and now there are Manifest creatures running around, and Wild Slash is a very cost-effective way to deal with those creatures, it's one mana instant speed, uh, it can finish your opponent off if, it, you know, if they're low on life, so it's flexible. Um, I do actually like Ugin's Construct a lot for the same reason, there are morphs and manifest creatures running around, and remember, it says when it enters the battlefield, sacrifice a permanent that's one or more colors, morphs and manifests do not have a color, so if you play this after playing a morph, you will not have to sacrifice anything. 
So that's pretty sweet. It's it's you know four or five for four that potentially uh, has a mitigatable downside, even though the downside can be damaging in certain uh, in certain game states. I mean, it's certainly not a downside that is ignorable, but there are times where it can look pretty powerful when you go turn three morph, turn four Ugin's Construct. I think I'd take the Wild Slash out of that pack though, for its flexibility and its cost effectiveness and its position in the format. So I'm not gonna open all of these right now, but basic land of each kind. Uh, I'm feeling some dragons coming, I really am. <laughs> well, feeling the dragons. The one legendary dragon that I do not have yet from this set is Ojutai that I mentioned earlier. Uh, that is the white blue dragon. Uh, and I would like uh, to have all five, so maybe Ojutai is, is coming up. Pressure point, another uh, card that makes prowess much better in draft now. I think uh, prowess, when it first was spoiled, at least for limited, reminded me a lot of heroic from the last block, from Theros block. And some cheap enablers like Refocus and Pressure Point will, I think, really help that deck to be uh, more consistent uh, if you are able to draft those cards out of the Fate Pack. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not reading all the names, because these are commons. I, I think what I just said was important, and uh, you guys probably uh, are more excited about the uncommons and rares anyway. So Grave Strength, Pilgrim of the Fires, <clears throat> Light Form. Uh, so far, I, would, I think I would first pick Lightform out of this pack, although there were, there were some good commons in here, but this is one of those white commons and uncommons I was talking about that's that's quite good. 4-2? Oh, Yasova! Yasova Dragonclaw. Yes! So we were talking about Yasova and her large feline... Uh, it's, it's getting blurry now. Her large feline companion. There we go. So, Yasova's quite cool. Uh... I think Yasova, along with some cards like Flame Wake Phoenix and Shaman of the Great Hunt, could be uh, uh, powerful enough to uh, to put Teamer mid range uh, into you know more top tournament tables. We'll have to see, but I like the way the deck is looking based on uh, the obvious synergies between the cards I just mentioned, like Flame Wake Phoenix, Yasova. You know, you you play a, a if you play a Flamewake Phoenix uh, or Yasova, you play a Shaman of the Great Hunt. If you can make her bigger uh, with the Shaman, and she has Trample, so if she doesn't die, she you know she will likely deal combat damage to your opponent, and then she'll get bigger. So there's some nice synergies there. Ooh, and I saw the R, and I got excited. So we did get a fetch land in this fat pack, and we got uh, probably the best one to get at the moment. I mean, this this one is currently the most expensive out of the five, but it also is uh, very popular in uh, not only in standard and blue white heroic uh, and in blue white control, which is a fringe deck, but you know in, in modern and like um, Jeskai control and in Jeskai flash. Uh, this is is uh, just I mean it's flooded strand. I don't really need to say more. I, I think uh, we are happy now. Sweet. Yep. So they said for those of you who who don't know, they said that uh, there is. Uh, there's like 1.5 fetch lands per booster box, so out of 36 packs, that's you know an average of one and a half fetch lands. Um, so it's not a guarantee that you will open a fetch land in a fat pack of Fate Reforged. So I'm very, very happy uh, that this fat pack contained a fetch land and maybe more. We don't know. We have uh, three more packs to go, including this one that's in my hands now. Sultai Emissary, Harsh Sustenance. Abzan Sky Captain, Jeskai Rune Mark, Dowson Gloom, Bathe in Dragonfire, um, Frontier Mastodon. I'm looking at our, uh, our recording space here. I'm going to go a little faster. Uh, Defiant Ogre, Enoch Guide, <clears throat> Alicia's Vanguard. Uh, first uncommon is Misfire Adept. Another one of those blue white cards that uh, is very powerful and limited, as I was talking about. You know, blue white got a lot of cool toys in this set for limited, and this is definitely one of them. This is also one of them, Elite Scale Guard. Wow, this is, I think, actually a tough pick. In fact, in the comments below, tell me which one you would first pick, assuming that our third uncommon and our rare isn't in contention. Um, this is really close, I think. 
I'd have to think about it a little more to, to give a definite answer on which one I would take, but I think it's really close, and Dark Deal doesn't change my mind. This might, though. Teamer War Shaman is probably one of the best rares in the set for Limited. Uh, so this is a really tight pack. You have one of the best rares and a big green creature, which I stated earlier, I think is still uh, a very reasonable first pick in this format. You know, green creature, creature with big upside. But also you have, you know, one of the best blue com uncommons and one of the best white uncommons in the set in this pack. I think I would take the War Shaman, but it, it's this is still a very tough pack, so please in the comments below tell me what you would first pick and draft. And the Blossoming Sands. Okay, two more to go. Anyway. <laughs> Eighth pack. Soul Summons. Will of the Naga. Ooh. Ancestral Vengeance. Cunning Strike. Abzan Runemark. Whisperer of the Wilds. Try saying that five times fast. Mardu Runemark. Ambush. Yeah, we don't care about this guy's name anymore. Right into Being. This, this fat pack just had to have a bunch of him, didn't it? Oh, there's a foil back there. Mardu Woe Reaper, whoa, is our first uh, uncommon. Battlefront Crew Shock and Meringue River Prowler. Sage Eye Avengers. Uh, this this is a card that uh, I had in my first Paper for Forged pre-release and was quite quite powerful uh, when I was able to cast him. I mean, he does cost six, but he's he's quite powerful. And the foil is an Abzan Advantage, which is actually uh, pretty sweet. You know, there are a lot of enchantments that are worth killing in Standard right now, like Whip of Erebos and Jeskai Ascendancy, and uh, even enchantment creatures like Corsair of Crufix. Uh, so, that's a pretty sweet foil to have. Pretty art. Nice. And... No fetch land here. A Tranquil Cove. And another Spirit. Okay, so I think we have enough uh, camera space here to capably display our final pack. So no Mythics yet, um, but we have a Fetchland, we have a Crux of Fate, uh, overall, uh, you know, and some really interesting what would you pick first draft questions out of this pack, uh, out of this fat pack, so uh, all in all I'm very happy with this particular fat pack, but uh, Let's see if we can go out with a bang here. So we've got Typhoid Rats, Ethereal Ambush, Dragon Bell Monk, Enhanced Awareness, Gurmag Angler, a Zombie Fish. You always need one of those. Uh, I mean, I, I have one uh, in my bedroom right now. You focus. Fierce what? Fierce Invocation. <laughs> Team of Rune Mark. Tassigur's Cruelty. Oop, skipped a card. Mardu Scout, you don't want to skip the goblin on the weird sort of sand surfboard. Rite of Undoing is our first uncommon. Cloud Form, uh, another one of those really awesome uh, white or blue uncommons. This one blue, but you know another one of those cards that pushes white and blue uh, higher up on my, uh, my radar for limited. Diplomacy of the Wastes. Not a mythic. Another Teamer War Shaman. That's kind of weird. It's unlikely to get two of the same rare in a fat pack, and yet two of the fat packs I've opened on camera for this channel uh, have have contained multiple copies of the same rare. The uh, Journey into Nyx fat pack uh, that I opened also had multiple copies of a particular rare. Um, like I said, this guy is great and limited, uh, and uh, this is also a tough pick because cloud, cloud Form is very good. Like the other pack, the pack that had. Uh, the other team of War Shaman had, uh, similarly, that one had two good uncommons, like, a two good, you know, one was white, one was blue, and this has, has a good blue uncommon. Which has, it has two, because Right of Undoing is quite good. And another Tranquil Cove. And a Manifest. Uh, reminder, so that, that will do it. Uh, well, since we were kind of flying through the commons due to space, and we do have a little bit of space left, I was wondering if there are any commons in this set that if you, you know, opened a pack and draft and had some kind of weak uncommons and rares, then you might end up picking the common over those cards. What would it be? Uh, sure, I'll, I'll go through here and talk about a few uncommons that I, or sorry, a few commons that I like. Um, so, I like Soul Summons. Again, I, you know, I, I don't think out of this pack with like a Team of War Shaman I would first pick it, but I do like the fact that this is uh, a non-creature spell 
that generates a creature because that can trigger prowess. Uh, so it's a sorcery, it'll trigger prowess, it, but it manifests the top card of your library. So you're getting a 2-2 two, two for 2, uh, but it could be so much more because, you know, you're getting a 2-2 two, two for 2, but, you know, what if the thing that you... Well, I'm not, uh, yeah, I mean, what if the thing that you, you know, manifest... Oh, this is the pack, I'm sorry, with the Sage Eye Avengers. Um, you know, is this, and, and then later in the game you can flip it up, or you can still, uh, you know, do things like use... Uh, right of undoing to bounce it back to your hand and then just play it out later in the game. Um, similarly, talking about white and blue having really good commons and uncommons, this is another uh, card that does a similar thing. It costs one more mana and it has blue in its casting cost instead of white, but it allows you to basically, uh, it's similar to Scry, you look at the top two cards of your library, um, you manifest one of them and you put the other on the top or bottom, so you get to look at the top two and um, it gives you information, card selection, it, uh, at the very least, even if, you know, none of the cards are cards that you want or like, uh, will get you a 2-2, two -two, uh, so, you know, and it will trigger prowess. So, looking at cards like that, and looking at a card like Pressure Point here, which is a cheap way to get in for damage, trigger prowess, replaces itself because you draw a card, and, uh, Lotus Path Jin, which is you know, a good card, a prowess card that combos with these cards that I just talked about because you'll, you'll cast those cards and you'll trigger this card's prowess ability. Those are those are all commons that uh, I think, you know, among others that uh, have caused me to be more interested in drafting uh, uh, blue, blue white and maybe not even full Jessica. I mean, you could do blue white by itself or you could do blue white splashing red. Um, you know, blue-white doesn't fit into any other clan, but uh, because this set has far fewer multicolor cards than cons, uh, in the first pack you won't really be picking a multicolor card often. You know, occasionally you'll open one of the rare dragons, or you'll end up with, uh, you know, a card like, like Cunning Strike after pack one. Uh, but this set has far fewer multicolor cards <clears throat> than cons of Tarkir. Uh, another thing that I would like to... Two other cards that I'll quickly mention before we wrap it up in terms of, um... Commons. Uh... Although, uh, yeah, I mean, your, your question was specifically what might you pick, like, first pick if your pack is weak. Correct. Um... A common that you would pick if your uncommons and rare were weak. So... Let me actually take a quick look here, and I will, uh, pick out one common from these nine packs uh, to talk about that, you know, I think would be a very reasonable first pick. All right, so I've looked through the packs. Uh, obviously, things will look a little bit shifted here. And uh, to answer Megan's question, I picked out this pack. So many of these packs have good uh, uncommons and rare, or, you know, uncommons and or a rare that's worth first picking. Um, this pack, though, I didn't feel uh, you know, I, I didn't really feel like... You, you could first pick Wandering Champion, I guess. Um, but I, you could also potentially first pick Vault Breaker. He's, he's clearly not a bad card. Uh, you could first pick Mastery of the Unseen. But I don't know that any of these are... Uh, like, Windmill Slam first picks. That being said, I do think a card that is potentially worth first picking is Douse and Gloom. Uh, depending on the pack, obviously. So I want to talk briefly about Douse and Gloom. And then also in tandem with that, Typhoid Rats. Uh, because these are cards that uh, work very well against some of the main mechanics in the format. Typhoid Rats, having Death Touch, uh, can uh, negate the mana that people sink into Morphs and Manifest cards that actually are creatures face down, and Douse and Gloom is a good way to, uh, you know, kill a Morph, uh, gain some life, so it, it kind of negates uh, a turn and potentially some tempo that your opponent has, uh, you know, a turn that they've spent and some tempo that they've gained, and now you've kind of gained that back. Um, I think this is very efficient in this format. It's an instant, um, you know, it can't go to their face. It can only target a creature, uh, but this can be used in tandem with a block or with some kind of uh, attack that triggers raid to kill a creature. Um, I think Douse in Gloom 
Um, it can also be, uh, be used, obviously, against uh, face-down manifested cards. So, uh, I think that Douse and Gloom, there, I mean, there are some other commons that are reasonable first picks, depending on the pack. Uh, this one here, Obzon Sky Captain, I also uh, like, I like, uh, you know, a 2-2 flyer that leaves behind something when it dies. Uh, four mana, I think, is a reasonable cost for that, because you're getting... Uh, a 2-2 two -two flyer, which I think is, you know, something that you'd pay 3 mana for, uh, and, uh, and then uh, the other mana kind of tacks on this, this spell-like effect that happens when it dies, or if it dies, so, but I think Douse and Gloom out of, uh, that pack that I just showed you is a card that would be perfectly reasonable to first pick, uh, but I think that there are, you know, many good rares and many good uncommons in the set, and in most packs you'll be first picking a rare or an uncommon. Um, so... This was really fun to open. Thank you for sharing this experience with me. Megan, any final words? Peace out, planeswalkers. Nice, I like that. I'll have to start using that. Usually I say uh, uh, something to the effect of, this is Metallian Magic signing out, but I think uh, in honor of my friend Megan here, I will adopt her phrase and say, peace out, planeswalkers.